Good night and welcome to the Galen Hour. The Galen Hour is back. This is season five of the Galen Hour. It's an absolute pleasure to be back with you on Wednesday nights. So for the next six weeks, you will be able to join us here on Love FM for the Galen Hour. This season, we are collaborating with the Ministry of Economic Development and we'll be talking about the ministry's um, development plans, really it's the country's development plans, and so we really look forward to discussing the midterm development strategy with you. We know all of our ministries were involved in developing this, this strategy and plan, and it is a pleasure to be here. The Galen Hour is a production of Galen University, and we are always looking for good um, partners in this particular initiative and this season like I said is special and we're partnering with the Ministry of Economic Development. So I am your host Diana Gomez Perifit and I have the pleasure of hosting along with Gabriel Hulse who is an economist in the Ministry of Economic Development. Gabriel welcome to the show with us tonight. She's frozen. So, okay. So, Gabriel is coming in virtually with us tonight. Um, and so are our two guests. Tonight is an introductory night. Tonight, we'll be talking about what is the medium term development strategy, what are its goals, who are the stakeholders who develop this particular strategy, what it means for our country and our people, how we can contribute, and how all of our ministries are involved in it. So Gabriela, um, Gabriel will be able to um, come in. I'm hoping internet is always a challenge, but Gabriel is host and there she is. Uh, Gabby, welcome. Um, I'll give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. You are a co-host and it's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Hi, good night everyone. Hi, I am Gabriel Holt. I'm an economist with the Ministry of Economic Development and I'm very excited to be doing this series with you all um, and shedding light on all the work that the government's been doing through the implementation of the MTDS. So thank you so much for highlighting this topic, Galen University, and thank you for having me. Well, it is a pleasure. Galen uses the Galen Hour as a medium to share information, um, or the pillars on which Galen is founded are the pillars of um, sustainable development, lifelong learning, and academic excellence. We take every opportunity to share information with our people. We believe that that's a public service that we should and can do. And, and this helps us to help the rest of our nation understand just how, um, how much Galen values the development of our country and contributes to it. So it is a pleasure um, to have you on tonight with us, um, Gabrielle, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, co -host, to you co-hosting along with me um, for this season. We also have two special guests. Like I said, this is the introductory season for us, and um, or the introductory episode, sorry, the whole season will focus on all of the other strategies. And we have two key people, um, uh, members of one, a member of the Ministry of Economic Development and the other is a member of the, sus, uh, of the Ministry of Sustainable Development. And um, just a little bit of background, and I'm sure they know a, hell, a lot more than I do about the um, development strategies. So I'll give them an opportunity to share those, but I want to welcome our two special guests tonight. We have with us Ms. Faye Nicasio, who is an economist in the Planning and Policy Unit of the Ministry of Economic Development. Welcome, uh, Ms. Nicasio. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on with us tonight. And we also have with us Victor Alegria, who is the director in the Sustainable... Um, hi, there you are, um, Faye. Victor is the director in the Sustainable Development Department. Welcome, um, Victor. Welcome, Fane. It's a pleasure to have you on with us tonight. And um, you will definitely be the ones with all of the valuable information. Um, we are here just to make sure that we get out as much as we can um, and get the questions answered. Um, together, Gabriel and I will do that. So welcome. We'll take one quick break and we'll come right back with the beef of our um, show tonight. Stay with us. With our unique student-focused services, Galen University prides itself in doing everything possible to facilitate the success of Galen Eagles. The flexible payment plans, student loan options, and Eagle scholarships make Galen affordable, accessible, and attractive. Treat yourself to the gift of a Galen education. Apply today and secure your spot. Consort with the Galen Eagles. Visit our website at www 
www.gillen.edu.bz or give us a call at 615-3129 or 614-6415. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. Um, just a few minutes ago, I introduced our co-host, um, Gabrielle House from the Ministry of Economic Development. So she's hosting with us tonight and we have Fane Nicasio and Victor Alegria on with us tonight. So they represent the ministries um, that were part of the um, coordinating of the development of the medium-term development strategy. I'd like to in, um, in, invite them to actually introduce themselves a little bit more and tell us the role that they, are, they played and what their ministry played in the development of the um, MTDS. So, um, Fane, if you would like to start, please. Um, just... Good night, everyone, and thanks for having us on tonight. Um, the Ministry of Economic Development is mandated to develop the medium-term development strategy. This is a five-year strategy that we um, collaborate with all other ministries in order for us to come up with what will be our area of priority based on what the... Um, the government have decided what would be their priority for the next five years. And so we would then liaise with the, the other ministries, um, put together their, their sector plan that would feed into the medium-term development strategy. And from there, we would move on in identifying and developing projects for us to meet the goals and objectives that were identified. So that is, in a nutshell, what MED does and what PPU does um, in, in, in our development process. Thank you, Fane. A uh, very critical role that the Ministry of Economic Development plays in the coordinating and execution of the MTDS. So I want to now invite you, Victor, to tell us a little bit of how, what role you play as a, um, as a director of the Sustainable Development Department. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks again, Galen, for uh, inviting us to be part of the show tonight. Um, to the, our radio listeners also, uh, pleasant good evening. Um, right, uh, to add to what Mr. Castro is saying, uh, the sustainable, the, the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management is a very important and strong ministry. It has three major components, and I, and I, I would like to share the background of the ministry first to see where the unit, uh, what the unit falls into um, the larger ministry. Um, the ministry has three uh, portfolios, that of sustainable development, um, climate change and disaster risk management. We're intimately linked, of course, three portfolios. Um, the sustainable development unit falls within the sustainable development portfolio. Um, our responsibility as the national focal point for both the Sustainable Development Goals or the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development, as well as the Small Island Development State, the Samoa Pathway. Um, we are uh, partners along with the Ministry of Economic Development, of course, in integrating the Sustainable Development Goals into our long and medium term development strategies. And as part of that, we actually serve as co-chairs um, along with the Ministry of Economic Development in the development of both, as, as I mentioned earlier, long and medium term development strategy. Of course, this is our second medium term development strategy that we're partnering with the um, our, our sister agency to be able to um, ensure that we have a clear and direct path in terms of the next five years. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Victor. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, absolutely with an initiative as large as this one, which really focuses and um, determines the future of our country, we need good people in um, key places. And so um, maybe if you could share with us um, what role all of, what role your unit played. The, I, I know they had to be coordinating agency, um, departments and ministries and how it is you were able to bring together all of the 18 ministries um, to, to f actually develop this um, very important document um, that will determine how we move forward over the next five years. Okay, so um, I guess uh, later on my colleague will join, but uh, very importantly, we work, the Sustainable Development Unit has been working very closely with the Ministry of Economic Development, um, what, two generations of medium-term development strategies. Um, we have been partnering with them in the entire process in terms of the consultations, which are ex extensive, as you rightfully said, we have not only 
uh, consulted with the government and the government agencies, and it's important to highlight that the consultations have been across government, of course, all the relevant ministries, but also very importantly, you have the non-state actors that we also engaged and, and consulted with from civil society groups, academia like yourselves. We have had um, uh, conservation NGOs included in there. We have the position, of course, the Senate. Um, we have had quite a bit of, of consultation to be able to, to garner all the information necessary to put into this medium-term development strategy because, again, it, um, and this is one of the, of course, the, the, the government, um, has been a very uh, adamant in terms of ensuring that we use, you know, what we call homegrown solutions to our problems. And it, it has, of, of course, it has shown to be very effective. And so this medium term development strategy for the first time was actually done within the ministries and the government to be able to ensure that all the concerns, all the issues, all the programs, all the projects, um, were actually integrated into this medium-term development strategy. So we have been working along with the uh, Ministry of Economic Development the, um, to add a little bit more, and, and probably this may be a, a something else of interest, is that we had uh, to establish, of course, a, a clear work plan in terms of how we would have actually been going forward. This was done in the guidance um, of Dr. Marcelino Avila, who is a senior uh, advisor to the Prime Minister that was leading the effort with both Ministry of Economic Development and Sustainable Development to be able to come up with a clear work plan in terms of the development of the medium-term strategy, inclusive, of course, of the level of consultations, ensuring that the feedback, there's some, some level of validation of the information that was actually being gathered to ensure that everyone's inputs were actually within that medium-term development plan in, in, in a special effort to ensure that it is homegrown, but also that people actually had some ownership of the plan to be able to ensure the effective execution at the end of the day. Wonderful. Um, so it is really good to know that this was developed by us. It is homegrown, as you say. And so hopefully that lends itself to more ownership of it. I want to shout out Dr. Marcelino Avila. He's a board member of, on the Board of um, Trustees for Galen University. And we're pleased to know that we were, through him, quite involved in um, in, the, in this process. So, um, Gabrielle, I'd like to bring you in um, as our co-host, and I know you work within the ministry, you are an economist, uh, you know, so if from the ministry perspective, is there anything in particular you believe that we need to um, bring to the forefront um, tonight? Yeah, I just want to invite my colleague, um, Fane, to talk about maybe some of the meat of the matter when it comes to the MTDS. So we do have objectives and we do have policy um, as Victor mentions, programs, projects, and initiatives that are involved in the MTDS. So I just want to ask Fane if she could speak a little bit more about what is exactly entailed within the MTDS. Okay, um, the MTDS has six um, strategic goals, um, poverty reduction. We also have um, the economic transformation and growth, trade and in trade deficit reduction citizen security, for the, um, protection of the environment, and stop corruption. So in these um, goals, we have strategic objectives where we're looking at, um, for instance, for poverty reduction, we're looking at reducing poverty by 50%. Um, we're also, um, and we're also looking at increasing our minimum wage and for the record, that has been increased to five dollars from three twenty-five to five dollars as of the first of January, twenty twenty-three. So we have met that goal. Um, contribute to building at least ten thousand robust homes for low-income families, and thus far, the Ministry of Infrastructure and Housing has um, delivered two hundred and fifty-five homes, and are on the process of. Um, concluding uh, 155 ongoing homes. Likewise, the government has reached out to the um, different um, commercial banks and seeing how they be how best they can assist in in providing a lower interest rate for our low income um, populace that cannot fit within the criteria for the housing the, um, ministry that they would be able to get 
a low income interest a, a low interest rate for first time owners so we're moving forward to meeting that target um they are also looking at food and nutrition security for for the poor currently we have a project that is ongoing the sustainable and inclusive project where we're tapping into farmers and see how we can make their their um allow them to, to increase their productivity in, in producing um, the different food items so we could increase the food basket of our of our country and at the same time allowing the poor the lower income um, populace to, to have food. So increasing food production in the local market will then have availability for all. Under economic transformation we have um, growing our GDP um we also have increase in employment and one of the areas that we're looking at in increasing employment is also along the line of um injecting um injecting stimulus for the private sector um through bell trade and um well through bell trade and the ministry of trade uh, to see how best we could assist with the private sector in growing their 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 um their products, right, and increasing productivity, which would then in allow them to create jobs for our market. Um, in citizen security, we were looking at the regularization of citizens in Belize. We have a lot of migrants that came to Belize. And um, during COVID, we, we realized that it became an issue because they weren't able to work. But at the same time, they weren't able to go home because our borders were closed. So the government decided to do an amnesty, and that is still ongoing. So we have quite a bit of um, refugees that are trying to regularize their, their status here in Belize. Um, under stop corruption, we had the for us to make governance structure work to ensure compliance with code of ethics laws, regulations of police, one of the areas that we're looking at and a, a project that is currently ongoing is to strengthen the, the public procurement the, um, unit and ensuring that we put in the necessary regulation, um, the procedural manuals, centralizing procurement for government, um, and we're also digitizing um, our services that we're able to make ease of business for the private sector and for our Belizean uh, population. So we have several um, strategic objectives under these goals and we're currently working at meeting these objectives through projects and through policies that we are developing. And just to build off of what my colleague Fame was saying, um, there are six strategic objectives for the MTDS and currently there's as she mentioned, some of them, 271 projects and programs, but that is just currently. But I, what I want viewers and listeners to understand about the MTDS as we go throughout this series is that this is a living document. The MTDS is not necessarily within, that's a, not an exhaustive list of projects and programs. It's going to continue to be built upon based on the work that the different line ministries are going to be doing. So when we go out throughout this series, I just want that to keep in the back of your mind that the MTDS is going to continue to grow and continue to build in terms of the projects and programs that it's developed towards the strategic objectives. Thank you for sharing that, um, Gabrielle. It is important for us to know that it's not a stagnant document. It is a living document. I, I, I like those choice of words because as a people and a going nation, we have to be able to to grow and to realize that we have to be flexible and we can't stagnate and no document in and of itself covers everything and as we move from one year to the next and um, the dynamics within our environment may change and so the ministries and the government of the day needs to change to make sure that it's securing the best for its people for our nation and so i thank you for that um victor i wanted to bring you in at this point again um from the from your perspective in the ministry of sustainable development um climate change and risk management. Um, so from your perspective, what are some of the key um, projects that you um, see happening, um, maybe from your ministry, uh, and things that you believe maybe we need, we are probably logging with, that we need to make sure we play catch up with? 
Um, so is there any, any, because I know no matter how, how much we plan for a project, um, we can't plan for all eventualities. And so um, things happen that um, allow some aspects of our projects maybe to stall. But um, we always need to make sure that the important um, um, objectives are still achieved. So I don't know from your perspective, if there's anything in particular you want to share with us. My apologies, you froze, you froze a little bit while you are asking a question. So my, my apologies, could you repeat the question? Yeah, so my apologies. So I was just saying Sorry. from your perspective, um, mm -hmm. as part of the coordinating unit, being a part of the Ministry of Sustainable Development, um, are there any projects that you want to make special mention of that have actually been realized? Are there any that have stalled due to unforeseen circumstances? I was just saying that when we're dealing with projects as large as the ones that you're dealing with, which um, really um, addresses our entire nation and the well-being of our nation and the development of our nation, um, we just we need to ensure um, that what we plan to happen will happen, but we can't always control how things happen. So I just wanted to see if you wanted to share any particular maybe challenges or successes with us. Well, in terms of uh, programs, as, as rightfully my colleague Gabriel mentioned, there's uh, 200 and odd programs and projects. So it's, it's quite an exhaustive list. But um, mm -hmm. uh, some of the things I think that the successes that we have seen, um, you know, immediately uh, is uh, with, the, with the new administration is one the, the blue bond is a perfect example of a success story that has been. Mm -hmm. Um, like I can say we're blessed as a country to be used as reference now. And, and I've always been used as a reference. Let me take that back. <laughs> in, in, in many aspects, Belize is always a, a pilot country. There's always, we always volunteer to be able to try new things, uh, to be innovative, to be creative. And I think we have actually paid off. And uh, the Blue Bond is a perfect example. We have been able to actually reduce our external debt significantly. And we've been able to use the, 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 the savings, we can say, um, of that into the marine conservation efforts of the country uh, and that is allowing us now to be able to plan well in terms of our marine sp uh, spaces and um, special spaces to be able to plan within the next 20 years at least uh, because we have secure funding to be able to ensure that we're able to support economically those uh, efforts that have been done especially on marine protected areas um as you're aware you know we, we are a country that boasts again rich natural resources our economy is built on our resources and therefore it is important for us to be able to ensure that we do have environmental sustainability along with that economic development and, and, and my colleague mr Cassio, made reference to the five of the six strategic objectives but one of those five strategic objectives also is the issue of environmental sustainability and so I guess that is one of the important ones in terms of the environmental field. And socially, of course, we have a lot of effort in place in terms of ensuring that we have a positive social protection uh, floor and uh, social protection strategy. And uh, the Ministry of Human Development is, is working very uh, hard in terms of ensuring that we can, in, that we can secure just the basic, these the basic elements uh, for survival for our people. And I think that is a very important um, part and a success. Um, in terms of the economy, of course, um, we have seen where uh, rightfully and, 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 and to be practical, because I think one of the important things in any medium term development strategy is we have to look at our successes and be able to, um, to, to really to, to clear examples that we're experiencing. Um, one of the things that was highlighted is the increase in minimum wage from 350 to $5 or so. Again, we have been able to reduce, um, unemployment to less than 5%. And many people argue and say, okay, well, yeah, that's not necessarily all the truth, but I can tell you off, off the bat, in my personal experience, trying to get right now someone to actually do mason work, for example, um, and, uh, and a lot of the common labor that we refer to. It's not easy to get someone at this point to be able to employ them because, again, they, they, everyone is working. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most important parts that I think we have to highlight for this medium-term development strategy, the government, uh, you know, committed to, to three specific fundamental um, benefits to every citizen. One is um, a quality education, right? And that is important, not only education in terms of the normal academic, but also technical education, vocational, uh, also uh, healthcare, um, access to, for everyone to have access to healthcare, and access to a piece of land, which is a very important issue, and we've seen that, that, that coming up over and over. But not only the house lot and house land or, 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 or a piece of land, but also a decent house where you can live. And I think, again, we've seen this 
actually um for quite a for quite some while back we haven't seen efforts being put to ensure that people have a decent life uh, you know and, and that is very important and one other component i think that was is, is is of course the decent of decent jobs and decent opportunities so that we move away from the traditional dependency syndrome that I refer to in sustainable development to more of you're able to actually sustain yourself. And so those are the important factors in there. So just to, to give an example of at least within each of the three major dimensions of sustainable development that you can clearly see successes. Well, in terms of challenges, any specific project, I, I don't know of any project that is actually failing or have any issues, but you, you, you find typical challenges with, 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 with project management, which is again, um, some challenges with coordination, of course, with in terms of being able to move the monies as quick as you might want because of processes and procedures. But as we go along, rightfully, mm -hmm. we're ensuring that we have monetary evaluation and learning of most of what we're doing. And so that is important so we're able to adapt and be able to address the challenges as, as expeditiously as we possibly can. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, I'm Victor. So, yes, this is a project that really encompasses all of our government ministries. And so it's a huge project, but it benefits and it impacts every single man or woman in this country. And so it's important for us to be aware, to understand. And some of the examples that Victor just gave, getting a piece of land, getting education, all this impacts all of us. And so I encourage our viewing audience to stay tuned. Um, to tune in for this entire season. Um, there's a lot of valuable information, and it's good for us to be educated and to understand what our government is doing, what their plans are for us. And that's exactly what this season of the Galen Hour will do for us. Um, we're talking about the midterm development strategy, um, which will take Belize into the next, through to 2025. So we're at the point where we need to take a short break. Please stay tuned with us, and we'll be back in a few minutes. <music> is on fire. These guys have some top speed of over 29 miles an hour. They blaze. Oscar, Oscar Kiros have attack. Oscar, the one who Oscar Kiros, the 2023 cross country champion. Look at the feel of that. Hi everyone, my name is Oscar Kiros, a graduate of Yellen University with a bachelor's degree in environmental science. I'm currently pursuing my professional career in cycling with the Miami Blazers. I can safely say that the critical skills as well as the time management skills that I've obtained from Yellen University has helped me in many ways that I could have imagined. And I can honestly say that I've applied these skills to both my cycling career and my everyday life as a professional. I want to serve as a great influence to the youths of today as to why an an education is important. Let's get back into the classroom. Let's prove them wrong. Opportunities are limitless. member of the Gillen Eagle Alumni Association. Reconnect with your fellow classmates, rediscover the Gillen Eagle spirit, and reawaken your inner eagle. Come home, come celebrate. 20 years of excellence with Gillen University. For more information, contact 636-8881. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. We are talking with members of the Ministry of Economic Development and Victor Alegria from the Ministry of Sustainable Development and Ms. Fane Nicasio. The co-host tonight is um, Gabrielle Hulse. Um, Gabrielle, um, we're back with our second segment of the Galen Hour. Um, you can go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, so as we delve into our second segment, I think what I really want to hone in on and what I want people to 
to start to understand is the coordinating and the coordinating mechanisms that are involved with the MTDS. Um, I know that you guys, you both mentioned that we have a lot of ministries that fall under the MTDS and they have a lot of ministries implementing their projects towards the MTDS. So I just want to understand from both MED side and the SDU side, what role you play in this coordinating mechanisms or how we work together in terms of coordinating all these different ministries and all these different projects and programs just to give listeners and viewers a little insight into how we deal with all of the projects and programs that we have to look over um we'll start with you victor if you want uh, sure sure and uh, thanks uh, interestingly um correct you, you, you the coordination is uh, at, the, uh, at the heart of the implementation of the medium term development strategy so at the highest level of course we have the prime minister's office right everything essentially goes through um has to be blessed has to be approved at the prime ministerial level of course so then you have your cabinet and you have of course then the ceo caucus and the ceos that have responsibility um, and of course, that is at the highest level in terms of policies, in terms of decision making and, and guidance, overall guidance at the national level. Then you have the technical level where the secretariat is actually um, very important. The secretariat is actually led by the Ministry of Economic Development along with the Ministry of Sustainable Development, the Sustainable Development Unit. So we serve as co-chairs essentially of the secretariat that has the responsibility of ensuring the coordination of the implementation of the plan because it's not the Ministry of Economic Development and the Ministry of Sustainable Development that does the implementation of the medium term development strategy. And I think that is very important to, to know because a lot of people have this misconception that oh well you guys are the ones that have to implement or, or only the government has the responsibility to implement the medium term development strategy, but that is far from the truth. What we do is essentially coordinate trying to ensure that the implementing agencies across all government agencies, all the 18 ministries that you already mentioned, that they have their own role and responsibilities to be able to move parts and parcels of this uh, medium-term development strategy, right? So we have, of course, um, the six strategic objectives. And within that, well, one step backwards. So the secretariat level is comprised of members from both the Ministry of Economic Development and the Ministry of Sustainable Development, uh, the Sustainable Development Unit in particular. Um, and so that is how the Secretariat is actually formed. And then we have the responsibility at the technical level to be able to then move that implementation, coordinate implementation, track the progress, report against the, the, the progress that is actually made. And to a large extent, try to sensitize people in terms of like what we're doing tonight, to sensitize people to be able to know what that medium term development strategy is and how they fit into that, into that plan. So we have six strategic objectives, rightfully as Mr. Casio uh, mentioned earlier. And so within the Secretariat, what we have is two persons assigned to one of each of those six strategic objectives. The responsibility then of those two persons from the, each of the strategic objectives then is to be able to then work with the relevant stakeholders of that strategic objective that they have a responsibility over. To ensure they not to necessarily guide the process in terms of dictating how these programs, projects, etc., should actually be implemented, but to actually work with these stakeholders to bring them together in a table to be able to then discuss how these programs and projects will be implemented and how do we strengthen and try to develop our, our yearly work plan so that on a yearly basis, each of these six strategic objective committees are able to support the relevant stakeholders to be able to then move their respective programs and projects forward. So we essentially track the progress. We plan together to see where we are actually imp we're implementing or where we have um, challenges. And then the secretariat then comes up, meets or we meet on a monthly basis or every two months at the, at the, at the worst case scenario to then be able to try to provide support to the individual technical committees to be able to move then the implementation of the respective strategic objectives that they have. And that essentially so is actually how uh, the, the coordination is actually done. Of course, there's then an element of um, responsibilities that we have. Um, the Ministry of Economic Development, as you as you rightfully mentioned, leads um, the national planning process in the country. And so they are the ones that lead the actual coordination or implement the development, sorry. Um, of the medium-term development strategies. The Sustainable Development Unit 
And of course, it tries to ensure and, and, and to go back in terms of what our function is because I don't think I really clarified it um, enough. What the sustainable development unit does as, as a co-chair for that security is to ensure that the sustainable development goals and the principles of the 2030 agenda of sustainable development, which includes, of course, transparency, accountability, inclusiveness, leaving no one behind, that those principles and SDGs are embedded into our medium-term development strategy. So that you're at the end of the day ensuring that you look at the global picture and how we fit into that global picture. And that is very important. Um, and then we have a shared responsibility with the Ministry of Economic Development where, uh, MED leads the, the planning process. Um, and then the monitor evaluation of that plan, um, as, as an in integral part of any, uh, long-term planning, medium and, and, and long-term planning. It's important to also have a monitoring evaluation framework, no? That, that accompanies that, that medium term plan. So that again, if you have a plan, but you don't have no mechanism through which you actually monitor progress, if you're actually implementing the way you should, if you have any regression in terms of any targets that you have actually set, then to be able to address those, then of course, I mean, you, you can't know what you've accomplished if you're not monitoring. And so that monitoring evaluation framework is actually being led in by the Ministry of Economic Development, so Sustainable Development to the SDU, along, of course, with the Statistical Institute of Belize, which is a very important and critical partner in terms of monitoring evaluation of the medium-term development strategy. Because again, they are the official data source for the country, right? And so the m &E framework and the development and, 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 and support, the Sustainable Development Unit does that, uh, or leads it at least again, and, and I have to be a lead and, and supported by Ministry of Economic Development and the Statistical Institute of Belize. Uh, in terms of um, tracking the SDGs as part of that medium term development strategy, that's again, um, we lead that effort uh, as focal point, a uh, national focal point for the 2030 agenda. And we do a, what we call a national re reporting of the SDGs that of course incorporates the medium term development strategy. Um, as we speak, we're, we're preparing to, um, we're currently in, in, in finalizing, um, with the UN system to be able to, uh, report what we call a voluntary national review, uh, for 2024. That will include, of course, the sustainable development goals. And within that, of course, you have the medium term development strategy that we will be reporting in terms of uh, progress and so far. But in, in, a, in a nutshell, that's the structure that we, we, we have. No? In terms of sensitization, that's all our responsibilities. That's MED, Sustainable Development Ministry, anyone that is within the government, it's all responsibility, I think, to essentially pass on that message of what our national development strategy is. What are we trying to achieve? What are we doing to achieve? Um, what we have set out to achieve to, to everyone, the common persons all there so that everyone is aware of what we're doing and to, you know, jump into this bandwagon and try to um, support us in that process. I think you bring up a really important point, um, Victor, about the MTDS, because even though it's being led by MED and the Sustainable Development Unit and the overall Ministry of Sustainable Development, it is not owned by any of these two entities. It is owned by the entirety of the government and all the other actors that are involved and have projects and programs included in the MTDS. And so I think that's a really important point that we really want to drive home, that the MTDS has stemmed from our ministries, but it is in the hands of everyone now in terms of its implementation. So thank you for bringing that up. I want to reel in Fane here um, just to talk a little bit more about MED's role. You mentioned that SDU um, has a role with the MTDS in terms of SDG tracking and SDG monitoring and evaluating um, in collaboration with SIB. So I just want Fane to talk a, bit, a little bit about what MED and maybe specifically the policy and planning unit does in terms of development planning or in terms of project implementation or monitoring, what we do that helps with the implementation of the MTDS. Okay, well, with the MTDS, before we go to the MTDS, we had the Horizon 2030, which is a long-term development framework that we have, and that set out some strategic objectives that were developed through um, the bottom-up approach where we went, we did consultation with the Belizean populace, and they told us where they want to see their country in the next 20 years. And so based on that, we've developed this, we're on our second medium term development strategy that is aligned to the Horizon 2030, which was mandated by the Belizean populace. 
And so with that, what the Ministry of Economic Development does as a planning ministry, the medium-term development strategy becomes our five-year mandate in order for us to carry out. The line ministries are supporting ministries along with quasi-government, um, social sector, um, the, 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 uh, the um, coordinating partners as well. They would come up every five years and develop their country strategy where they would decide what areas they're going to focus on for assisting Belize in, in our development. In, in doing so, we are then able to identify our priority areas through the medium term strategy layers with the different ministries and quasi government and rope them in in order for us to formulate projects and policies that would then meet our objective. Once those projects are identified, they're entered into the, the public sector investment program. And um, these projects are then managed by um, Project Steering Committee and um, Project um, Execution Unit or the Central Executing Units. And um, we would then monitor. And these monitoring tools are once again through the, the PSIP. And that will also allow us to track if we're meeting the, the, um, the indicators that were set out in the, the medium term development strategy um, MA framework. So once the projects meet their goals and objective and they are realized, we're able to say, well, the outcome of this project was realized based on um, strategic objective within the, the, the MTDS. And it has, uh, it's also aligned with whatever sustainable development goals that that project would have been aligned to. And therefore that indicator would have been met and we would have said that, okay, we have reached this percentage in our target for that particular indicator. So in a nutshell, we immediately manage the entire project cycle management, and we also manage the, 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 the policies side of things where we are able to transition from the policy into implementation and the monitoring and evaluation thereafter. And we also do a lesson learned by um, documenting, evaluating and documenting what has transpired on an annual basis through the, the medium term, the, through the, the um, public sector in, investment program narrative where we are saying that, okay, this project was successful. We have met our outcome and we're looking at the impact now because we're, it's post after the project has concluded and we're seeing what what impact it has on our society, what impact it has uh, along the line of accessibility to education, to to social um, intervention, um, what access that what what impact it had in the private sector uh, along the line of economic growth and that kind of stuff, um, creating new jobs, that that kind of stuff. So we're able to track the entire process of that um, particular. From, from that particular activity, from, from identifying it as a problem, entering it into the, the medium term goals and establishing it as a project, implementing that project, and then monitoring that project for, to ensure that it's completed and then give a feedback that, okay, this is the, the result of that and this is the impact it has on our society. Yeah, I think I think you both made a really good, um, really good picture of what MED does and what SU does, especially in relation to the MTS. MED, we see the work that we do with national planning and national project implementation and monitoring. And the SU, while they do have national responsibilities, the SU also has these global responsibilities and keeping Belize aligned with our global responsibilities as well, which I think is why, you know, as MED and SU as the lead ministries, why we are the lead ministries towards MTDS and how we can help aid the other line ministries involved in MTDS. So thank you guys for that. Um, I'm going to ask Misty if she has any other questions for our guests. Thank you, Gabby. Yes, so um, thank you for um, Finn and Victor for that information. That is such valuable information to share with our public and our viewing audience. Um, you spoke about m and &E, absolutely important in any project. Um, it really helps us to stay on course to know where we may um, 
need to areas that we need we may need to address um, differently or better, and so that we know what our successes are. I know you do reporting. I know you're tracking your um, progress, but how does uh, how do you report to the general public? I mean, I know information comes out in news. I know Statistical Institute puts out um, data, but is there any other? Um, have you have decided on what your visibility will be and how you ensure that every man and woman, because we do need to know and it should be our interest to listen in and want to find out, knows what's happening and how the, what the government is doing through um, these developmental strategies for the betterment of the um, nation? How do we, how do we know? Where do we look? How, how do we do that? Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a very, as I see my, my other two colleagues are, are, are smiling out. So, um, I, I guess this is a, this is one of the challenges. I know we've been talking about again. Um, so what are some of the successes and what are some of the challenges? And we have to be uh, frank in terms of where I think um, we're, we're not doing as good as we would like to. Uh, the issue, and this is just an, in my humble opinion, and, and, and with all caution, of course, I think overall the government is, is always weak in terms of, um, not weak, but yeah, yeah, let's say we, to be honest, in terms of putting out what we do, because there's so much that the government is doing. There's so much I can tell you that every ministry is doing towards achieving these one SDGs targets and um, that we have set out at the global targets mm -hmm. and those that we have actually set out in the medium term development strategy. As a matter of fact, the, if you, if, if, and I, and I challenge your viewers so to take a little opportunity to look and, and, and I'm sure you can Google the uh, plan with these medium term development strategy and we'll find that document openly available and you'll be able to see how the actual uh, medium term development strategy is structured and you'll be able to see that it's very important. It's clear with the programs and projects. It provides you the expected outcomes and targets so that you can, you can measure progress over time mm -hmm. so that you can determine where we are actually not progressing the way we would want or in some cases probably regressing in, 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 in a few cases. And it also gives you the link towards the SDG. So what each of these programs and projects, who are they contributing to the sustainable development goals? And that is important. Um, in terms of communications, there's where we have a little challenge that we're not doing sufficient, um, in my view, to be able to uh, bring across that message of what all we're doing as a government. Mm -hmm. um, and again, remember, all of our offices are busy with so many things, and that's not to, to say that's an excuse, but there's so much that you can do. In terms of sustainable development unit, we have recognized over the last two years that that is one of the areas that we really want to strengthen. And now with a very clear mandate that we have in the medium-term development strategy, and it has actually as one of the responsibilities that we have with SDU as, as rightfully we said earlier, tracking, reporting, and then sensitizing that to ensure that we, we beef up, if that is correct, you know, terminology, terminology that they use, to beef up those two programmatic areas for the Ministry of Sustainable Development and, of course, in partnership with MED because, and I have to emphasize on everything that the Sustainable Development Unit does in terms of ensuring that the sustainable development goals and the term development strategy moves, moves forward is always done in partnership with the Ministry of Economic Development. And so one of the things that we're doing now, two things, uh, two things that I want to highlight. One is, as I said, we're preparing a voluntary national review, which will be uh, presented at the High Level Political Forum next year. Of course, this is in New York um, to the UN agencies, and that's a global reporting that we do. But one of the things that we're doing as part of that VNR is and it is um, uh, something that the UN system, and again, as member countries have agreed, that we have to then look at these reports as not standalone documents. And this is, I think, one of our issues that in many cases, and today I was in a meeting, for example, there was an important um, a project that was done 2021, looking at what we call track fin, which is, again, to be able to cost and, and, and expenditures um, and investments in water resource management. But unfortunately, we look at those documents as standalone and we don't see the need for us to be able to sensitize people thereafter. And so what we want to do going forward is two things. One, all reports, find all mechanisms through which we can essentially be able to provide and share that information, not only with government, as you rightfully said, not only within government, but outside of government or private sector partners, mm -hmm. 
the civil society. Schools play a very important role, academia, and looking at those umbrella institution organizations that are outside of government to be able to disseminate that information as much as possible and find the most appropriate uh, mechanisms through which that can actually happen. What would work best? Um, so that's one. And, and to, to be able to do that also, the Sustainable Development Unit is currently working on a communication strategy that looks at not only Sustainable Development Unit, but within the Ministry of Sustainable Development, so that we're able to ensure that there's, there's linkages and coordination and collaboration between all the communication efforts that we have. Because as you're aware, um, I mean, as a government, we're always limited in resources. And so it's important for us to be able to, to, to collaborate with each other, to be able to then push out messages jointly so that we don't push out messages as individual. Every, every little issue that we're doing, we, 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 we have already challenges to, to disseminate that. But for us to be able to look at where we are collaborating, um, the larger picture and larger projects, programs and successes and be able to disseminate that information as much as possible. So there's, there's, a, there's many things going on, as I said, to be able to address these gaps, it just takes a little longer than what is expected. And so we hope that by, uh, at least within the, the, by the end of this year, we should have a communication strategy for the sustainable development uh, goals and medium term development strategy. And then we're also looking at then a reporting and a systematic reporting. Some of the things that we're discussing, um, is to ensure that the, rep that the tracking is done continuously. That reporting is just, just, is done in a systematic manner that we do a periodic manner. So that every two years we, we generate these national reports for the medium term development strategy. We want to do an yearly report. And so that those technical reports are actually disseminated also on an annual basis that shows where the government is actually progressing in each of these programs and projects, which is very important. And of course, all of this information comes together to actually feed into these global reports that we do. But I, I can, I can almost assure that within the next, at least, um, between now and mid of next year, I think we should see some improvement in terms of the, the communication efforts and dissemination of valuable information, as well as putting in place a reporting mechanism going forward. No? Not, not only for the MTDS, but also for SDG and other international obligations that we also have. Excellent. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to hear that. Um, it's so very important for our um, people to know what's happening. Um, lots of times we do projects, particularly projects as large as these that involve all of the ministry and all the work that the ministries are doing. And then we never really know because lots of things go on um, celebrated. And so I'm happy to hear um, what you just shared, um, Victor. I also wanted to, you, to ask a little bit more about the public private partnerships. You mentioned it, it's absolutely important. Sometimes we tend to believe that it's the government that needs to do all that they set out to do. But really and truly, as you said, government works with limited resources um, and it, it, is a, it needs the participation. Whatever strategies we take on and whatever projects we take on needs the participation of the private sector and the civil society. So I'm real, and of course, academia. So. Um, this, um, and, and I'll put a plug for Galen now, what we're doing here today is part of what academia can do to help to ensure that um, the nation is more aware and more informed. But we cannot ignore the importance of the public-private partnership in all of these important projects and programs. Um, and I'd like to invite um, Fane, if she'd like, you'd like to comment a little bit more about how important that has been and continues to be for, um, for the Economic Development Ministry and how we move our country forward. Okay, when it comes to the public-private partnership that we have, we um, liaise with several of the civil society as well as with quasi-government to assist in in meeting the needs of our, our Belizean people. And so, um, for instance, currently we're doing a trade and investment um, project where we're looking at strengthening Bell Trade in order for them to assist the private sector in developing um, their their um, business plan and and giving them um, a little bit of grant for them to expand or to start up their businesses. So that's one aspect that we would um, assist with. There's also public-private partnership in the sense of developing projects where we're looking at um, the private sector, the um, 
doing a joint venture with government in order for us to meet the needs of our Belizean people. And so that's another aspect of our of public partnership that we, we tap into. Um, and our supporting partners, our, our donors that assist us in meeting the development needs that we have for, for, for our country. And so we would have um, donor coordination meetings or a um, forum where we would identify what is our priority areas and they would assist us in saying, well, this is what we have available uh, um, for that type of funding. This is how you could tap into that funding. And um, from there, we would then um, do our submission for us to, to seek those fundings. So we have both at the level of um, in, in, in um, IFIs assisting the government. We have at the level of civil society, particularly in social sector, like for instance, um, we have human development working closely with um, the woman, the, the, the Wind Belize and, and, and those types of organization. We have also um, private, private sector being interested in a particular area and they would approach the government of Belize and if it's feasible at the time, we would then say, okay, we're willing to do a um, public private venture with that particular, um, for that particular um, mm -hmm. sector that they're interested in because it would help in the development and um, of our country. Great. Yes. So, I mean, we, we really cannot do what we're doing without everybody, all stakeholders involvement. So thank you, um, Victor and Fain, for sharing such valuable information. This is really just the introduction to what's coming. And Fain, you mentioned working with human development among other ministries and quasi-government agencies. But just um, so our viewing audience knows, next week, we have the um, Human Development Ministry on talking about what their role is. And so and so every um, Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we'll have a different ministry on. Um, the information that um, is available um, to share is just so vast. Um, so we, we look forward to sharing as much as we can. We do obviously put our guests on the spot. Um, you are the technocrats. You are the coordinators. We thank you for bringing all that valuable information to the table. Um, we, we only have an hour to do the Galen Hour, so we're almost out of time. And I'd like to quickly ask um, both of you, Victor and Finn, if you'd like to give your last, um, your last words um, to the viewing audience, and then we'll come back to our co-host, um, Ms. Gabrielle, and ask her to do the same before we close out this first episode of season five of the Galen Hour. So, um, Victor, would you like to go first, please? I I'm good. I had that normally would offer ladies before gents, but that, that's okay. Yeah, this is this is a ladies' yeah. world. So we know, I, I, I you're know outnumbered it's, tonight, I, Victor. So yeah, I am absolutely <laughs> proud of that for sure. Trust me. Um, so uh, last words. Um, we have a medium-term development strategy. I'd like to encourage, of course, our, our viewers um, and an audience to, to inform themselves as much as possible, to take a little time to be able to understand what our uh, plans are, national plans are, um, both medium and, of course, long-term. We, we need to have a vision of where we want to be rightfully as a country, and, and we need to all work towards that. Um, we need to work together. That's very important. We need to understand what our roles and functions are because at the end of the day, any puzzle cannot be completed without one piece being being there. You need everyone to be a, a, an equal partner in every level and in every sense in, if we are to achieve what we intend to achieve in our medium-term development strategy. So we need to take ownership. Please do so. Um, the Sustainable Development Unit and the Ministry of Sustainable Development is always, of course, available for any questions, responses, support, anything that you need, we're, we're always there. Um, and so with that, hopefully we'll be hearing from us um, sooner than later. And uh, at any point, if we are invited again, we will definitely be willing to, to provide additional information on specific thematic areas. Thank you, Victor so thank you. Alegria, Director of the Sustainable Development Department in the Ministry of Sustainable Development. It was a pleasure having you on with us tonight. Ms. Faye Nicasio, would you kindly give your last words? Certainly. Um, 
first of all, I would like to thank you guys for having us on on the show tonight. I would say that for you to find the the document for the Plan Belize Mean of Term Development Strategy, you can go on the MED website, and it is also on the government website for you guys to to look at and get familiar with. I would for any country to develop the way we would want it to develop, we need every hands on board. We need every single Belizean that is um, for for us to meet the different goals and the different objectives we have set. So be familiar with the document, see how, how best you can get involved. Um, civil society, academia, um, quasi-government, private sector, um, well, the development partners already have the document and um, public sector as well. Um, students, you guys as well are, are, are integral in the development of our country. And this is one document that can assist in us meeting that step-by-step -step incrementally developing our country. And so with that, um, I would say once again, thanks for having us. And that will be my... Mm -hmm. and Thank you so much, Ms. Fain Nicasio, economist with the Planning and Policy Unit of the Ministry of Economic Development. Um, Gabriel, I, we're, all, we're out of time, so um, thank you so much for hosting with us tonight. And, and of course, you get the pleasure of giving your last words. Yes, I don't want to take up too much time, but I just want to say thank you, of course, to my colleagues, Victor and Fane, for joining us today. And I hope that everyone that's listening and watching stays tuned throughout the series because we are going to be going even deeper into depth about the six strategic objectives. So each episode will surround the specific strategic objective and we'll have the ministries that are involved with in implementing that strategic objective. So I want to encourage you to continue to with this series and to watch and listen. And just once again, thank Galen University for this platform because this is like I said, not only for us, but for everybody. It's to the benefit of the country. So thank you so much for this. And I'm looking forward to joining you all for the rest of the series. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you to our viewing audience, to our guests. It is a pleasure to be here with you and to be back um, on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock here on Love, F Love TV. And it's um, also shared on Galen's Facebook page. And so you can catch us on any of those two forums. So see you back here next week, same time, same place. And Gabrielle promised she'll be in studio with me next week. So I'm kind of holding her to that, Gabrielle. So next week, it won't be just me, but we have both our hosts in the same um, place. So um, it's always a pleasure. Um, the Galen Hour is a production of Galen University. It focuses on academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong, earn lifelong learning. Thank you for joining us and see you next week.